All right, everyone, we are back here for Tour 9 again. Uh, very standard bag to what you're used to me uh, playing here, which is going to be a Thor's Hammer. You know, I play a Thor's Hammer for this tour. Um, I play it kind of like a Thor's Hammer 4. Uh, a 3 is also okay for this tour. Um, you don't need a lot of length here. This is kind of one of the rare situations where you do. Would be this hole into the wind. So here you're going to see me. Oops, oops, that's the one I meant. And uh, you can see, you know, here's going to kind of be my land zone. So I'm trying to kind of play accordingly and try to just get it over the rough here. So I'm going to play this very aggressively. Notice how I'm keeping off the top spin. I want to avoid getting it to run out into the long rough or into the bunker. So what I need to do to avoid that is land very aggressively towards the rough edge on the other side. So that's what you're seeing me do here. And it did hit the rough, um, not the end of the world. You know, there's no real certainty that we were going to uh, make the green here anyway. Um, but it's better to be safe than sorry, I feel. Um, because you can see even with that little rough bounce that I still get into the center of the fairway. Um, whereas the opposite, you know, had I put five topspin on that, um, missed the, missed the rough, it might not have held the fairway. And you know, my opponent here, don't, you, you, you shouldn't be backing off here. Um, if you're watching, especially if you're playing with extra miles, extra mile, um, in a win like this, you don't need to take off. He could have just, you know, full throttled, um, his extra mile. Uh, with the Quasar since it doesn't have as much power and there you're seeing a little mistake where he actually hits the water and like I said you know full everything he would have still been okay there and here you see I'm getting the wind straight in the face again so it's really not going to uh, you know get me anywhere special so what I usually do um, with this wind is I'll usually usually hop the pond here I might set up to do that with some curl, maybe. Uh, maybe about half power. Let's try that. I'm going to use uh, landscape mode here. Um, I'm going to use about half power. And good ball. I'm just trying to kind of create just a little bit of extra push to the left. And it actually ran through into the rough. Wow. So I didn't think I could quite get it down that far. I did. But at the same time, you know, being in the rough might not necessarily, you know, uh, take me out of that pitch. It actually sometimes makes that pitch a little bit easier. So hopefully with a little bit of luck, you know, we can have a half decent wind. And, uh, you know, what's nice about rough iron is it actually keeps the ball low to the ground, much lower than your wedge does. So you'll find that some of the pitches are far easier. So it's going to basically come down to perfect ball timing. So that's what we're going to focus on. Um, but this pitch in itself is going to be very challenging because of that hill that's right in front of the hole that I'm sure you guys are all aware of. That, that little. So what you're going to see me try to do is I'll try to bring it in uh, with some side spin here. And you can just see how wonky this thing is. Look at this pitch. It's all over the place. So you can tell how hard it's going to be. Um, we're going to very minimally break this thing. So if this is, you know, where the hole is, we're going to go not even quite a, a ring. So kind of like right there. And just kind of go with that. See if we can't get this shooting towards the hole. Perfect ball. Let's see. You know, even with perfect ball, there's no real way to guarantee you're going to make that. It's just so, so tricky. So there you see me missing that pitch anyway, even with perfect ball. And you can just see, you know, it's because of that mound right in front of the hole. It makes that pitch very, very challenging. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that I use, you know, Kingmaker for strategy on this hole is you just kind of never know what you're going to get. And you know, you know, a nice second win with a kingmaker on, you could, you could potentially eagle this. Um, and there you see my opponent just running into the rough. He's going to have to face something very similar to what I just did, which is you know a very very tricky pitch. 
to where getting it and grooving it online is going to be, you know, your biggest obstacle to face. So, you know, I wish him luck and hopefully he can get this one dropped uh, better than I did. And maybe we should have a shootout here if he does. Very similar wind. So he, he already sees what I saw what I did. So you, know, you could just kind of do something a little bit similar. One of the reasons that I use that side spin is, you know, just to kind of aim on a more better surface, you know, kind of away from that uh, fringe's edge. And you can see, you know, my opponent trying to do very similarly. And you can see, you know, he's going to need to go about a full ring. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's see if uh, it's going to be close. So let's see if he can get perfect ball now. And as you can see, you know, it's just so, so tricky. So, you know, he, by fractions, overplayed it. I, by fractions, underplayed it. Like, it's that's how critical that that hole is. Because you can see our movements. He had a little bit more win than me. And it looked like he went enough based on what I did. Um, and it still just wasn't quite enough uh, to put that in. So little unlucky break there but uh, with that being said you know hopefully you guys have uh, some nice technique there you can see you know there's several ways to beat your opponent um, I did it with birdie there so you know putting the ball in place sometimes can put a little bit of pressure on your opponent he might you know try to do something a little you know more aggressive and he tried to do it without a kingmaker and you could see that was the big difference there um, but it had he you know gone for that full top spin uh, that would have been a nice alternate approach if you're going to go with uh, quasar balls. But uh, one of the things that I suggest, you know, is for you guys who are coming up in tournaments, save all your good balls for the last three tours. You virtually don't need any of these Kingmakers or Titans or Katanas. All these balls can essentially collectively be saved for the tournament, Tour 9, 10, and 11. So using that theory, you, you, you guys can... You know, especially with some good tournament success, you can kind of save those balls for the tours where you need them. And a lot of my guides are set up kind of to use the proper balls at the right time. So if you watch a lot of my Tour 7 guides or Tour 6 guides or whatever, I'm using more Quasars, Navigators, stuff like that. Stuff, you know, sometimes even Marlins. So um, keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, I think you guys will have good success in Tour 9. Uh, let me know how it goes. I'll see you guys later on the next one.